Hello guys, we are back with our next unit. In this unit, we will be starting about XML guys. Guys, this whole unit consists about XML only. So we'll be discussing what is XML and its futures and what are the advantages in XML in this lecture with an example guys, okay? So again, the video will be around 10 minutes, okay? Okay, so please concentrate for a few minutes guys because once you get an idea about XML, you can easily continue with this chapter till the end guys because everything depends on these kind of concepts only. So basically you will be doing multiple operations on XML like you can say XPath, you will be doing XML processes, you will be doing XML documentation that is nothing but you will be doing document type definition, name, spaces, schema and everything we will be discussing in this unit guys, okay? Okay, so the first question that comes to your mind is, okay, we discussed about HTML Okay, we discussed about HTML, right? And we discussed some part or some introduction about CSS, right? Just give me a second. Okay, we discussed some introduction about CSS. So now why, X, why XML is your question? So I told about JavaScript and Bootstrap also, right? In our previous lecture, just I gave you an introduction, like some words. Just in one of our lecture. I don't know in, exactly in which lecture, but we discussed about that. Okay, so we, in Java, about JavaScript, we will be discussing the next whole unit, guys. In the next unit, we will be discussing completely about JavaScript. Okay, in this unit, you will be discussing about XML. So your question will be why XML now? So what is the drawback of something which caused introduction of XML? Okay, so what is XML first? Let us see. XML is nothing but extensible markup language guys. Okay, so it is nothing but extensible markup language. So if you recall, HTML full form is hypertext markup language. So these both belongs to the same family markup languages. So these both come under markup languages. Okay. So from here you can say there is some relation between these two. So there are some drawbacks in HTML guys, which resulted in the introduction of XML. Okay. So now the first drawback, which I found everywhere, wherever I'm trying to gather the data, I'm getting this reason guys. So basically HTML. So when you are requesting for files or anything, the HTML files will be returned guys. You will be getting the HTML files to your system right from the web server. You will be getting the HTML files. So when your system or the client system uses these HTML files and if he filled a form, so the whole HTML file will be transferred again with the form values. So basically this is a bit costly when compared with the XML. So basically XML is mainly used for transfer of data guys. Okay, so the main advantage of this is nothing but to store and transfer data. So this is nothing but an extension to the HTML. You can say extend extensible markup language. Okay, so basically in XML, you we can write our own tags. So basically in HTML, there are some fixed tags like bold, paragraph, headings, image, audio. Like that there are some fixed right around there could be around 50 at max I, I, according to me at max there will be 50 we discussed around 10 to 20 at max in our lectures okay whereas in xml you can define your own tags the main advantage you can define your own tags you can form your own structure so we'll be discussing about them guys don't worry okay so let us first go through why xml few points why we are selecting xml other than html or other than any other markup languages Okay, so XML is nothing but extensible markup language is a markup language. XML is designed to store and transport data. Yeah, that's what I have just told you, right? So transporting and storing data will be better and faster in XML through XML. Okay, so when did XML release? It was released in 1990s guys in late 1990s. That is nothing but 1998. It was recognized by W3C. That is nothing but World Wide Web Corporations or something. C will be the full form. Guys, please check that. If you are, if you want the full form, please Google it, guys. Sorry, I don't know. It, the first thing is www. The World Wide Web. Okay, okay. So it is. Uh, it was introduced. It is was created to provide ease to store the data and store self descriptable data. So this self descriptable data is nothing but the thing that we are that we are designing on our own. I told you like that. We can design our own tags. So that is nothing but self descriptable data, describing data or okay. So XML is a not a replacement of HTML. Please remember that guys. So the magic or the thing that we will be using here is the web pages are designed with the HTML only. 
whereas the data transfer and data storage is done in the form of XML files. Okay, sorry. Okay, so that is done in the form of XML files, guys. Okay, so if you have any idea with Android development, okay, so when you are developing any kind of app, every app will be having a layout. So the whole layout will be designed or defined in XML guys. So XML is not only for storing data, you can even design the components also. Please remember that also. So the example is nothing but Android development. Okay. So XML is designed to be self descriptive. So basically by observing the tags only you can say that because the tags are user defined. So you can define a tag and you can use it. There is no issue or no problem with anything. Okay, so XML is designed to carry data, not to display data. So this is the reason why it is not replacement of HTML. Because HTML is used to represent or structurally to store something, right? Okay, so XML tags are not predefined. So basically I told you, right, those are user defined. So you can define your own tags. Yeah, this is the exact point that you are searching for. Okay, the next point is XML is platform independent and language independent. So basically to use XML, you can use any operating system, any platform and you can connect XML with any language. So that is the reason why we are having a whole chapter about this guys. That is the reason why, because it's really important, independent and everything. Okay. First, let us go through some introduction about markup languages. Okay. Markup languages. A markup language is a modern system for high, for highlighting or underlying a document Students often underline or highlight a passive to reserve easily the same sense of modern markup languages highly used with the tags. So basically the whole thing is saying that markup languages use tags guys. That's it. So all the tags are predefined or user defined based on the markup language. Okay. So now you'll be seeing that why XML. So I told you XML is platform independent and language independent. So you can assume that you are using a server with some operating system and you want to transfer the data into another operating system. So in between these two, you can transfer the data in the form of XML files guys. There will be no issue. Even this might be running on Apache and this might be running on Microsoft IIS. There will be no issue in transferring the files and there will, you will not be facing any issues guys. Okay. Okay. So I hope everyone got a clear idea. I think the, pe the, ink pe the pen uh, ink has been completed. Okay. So we got this right. Okay. So we can transfer and that is that that is what it's given here guys and you can do programming in any way. So assume that here you are using Java for programming and here you are using for PHP. So any language it might be just the syntax should be correct. The, J, the XML files will work on both the cases. So basically if you think the friend of XML is nothing but JSON guys. J A S O N. They will be calling JSON files right. So I think these are more, po more popular to us. So I rarely hear the word XML whereas JSON. JSON is nothing but Java script object notation guys. So this is also used for transferring the data in the form of JSON files. This is nothing but XML files. So both are used in Android development. XML is used when you are using Java script and all those things you will be using JSON. Okay. Okay. So now let us see some features and advantages of XML. Okay. Guys, I'll be reading the heading and I'll be giving you the explanation. You can go through the theory guys because the theory is what I'll be explaining from the statement. Okay. Okay. So just give me a second. Okay. So now let us start. Okay. So XML is widely used in our current era of development, web development. It is also used to simplify data storage and sharing. So this is what I told you, right? To store data and to share data, we'll be using the XML files. Okay. So the main advantage of XML file is nothing but, sorry. XML separates data from HTML. So basically whenever you are opening a website, you are opening indirectly an HTML page, sorry, HTML file or some group of files. So each of the file will have some data in it. So whenever a user transmits the data into the server, like he filled a form or he's trying to log in. So in this all situations, the operation should be really fast and it should be optimal or readable or it should be fast and easy to do. So that is the reason why we will be using XML instead of transporting the whole file again with the data directly transmitting XML files will be easy. So we'll be going through an example guys. Don't worry. Okay. So that is the reason why XML separates the data from HTML we can say. So XML is a simplify simplifies data transfer or data sharing. 
so we talked about that right so data can be transferred from any kind of device to any kind of device there is no difference between anyone from anyone to anyone you can share even the data transport also the same theory you can write similarly simpler and platform changes so assume that you are using apache tomcat server in your local server and you are using a host or the hosting provider server you are using somewhere which is located in somewhere else so you can directly transfer your whole storage data whatever it is there in it you can convert it into an xml file and you can transfer it and you can unzip it and you can use it use the data there so that is the main advantage it does not depend on any platform here it might be you are using macintosh like apple and here you might be using windows or linux so any situation the xml file will not have any issues guys that is the main thing that you should learn from xml okay similarly xml increases the data availability so the availability of data will also be increased so for this i th i think i forgot the definition so let us go through the theory so difficult different applications can access your data not only in html pages but also from xml data sources okay so basically whenever you are opening a web page and you are doing something like you are reading like you are doing anything okay so reading machines there will be many machines right from the, where you will be collecting the data so this uh, xml files will be available forever and the storage space that they take is also low okay so xml files can be used to create a new internet languages so basically there are multiple languages guys these are the some list of languages which are created from xml so on basis of xml these are made so that is nothing but xhtml so even we are having a language or so you cannot say that is a language that is also markup language so extensible hypertext markup language so here also you can define your own tags guys so similarly we are having multiple things okay so now you are interested in knowing the example right so i told you that it will be transferring the data faster easier and i gave that much explanation so now you want an example so the best example will be a tree structure guys any xml program can be understood using a tree structure so we'll be discussing about the tree structure again so for now let us first go through an example okay okay so in the pdf which our sir has shared us there are multiple examples guys there is no need to remember each and every example or don't go step by step like basically you read example one don't go to example two you read one example you understand the second example third example that's enough don't try to remember or don't try to practice again and again the same examples because in exam you'll be writing only one example right at max so that is the reason why just learn one example it will be enough okay so i'll be discussing two examples guys the rest two you can learn you can observe okay so initially each xml file will be starting with this format guys xml version you will be writing the version and encoding is nothing but iso 8859 minus 1 1 okay so iso is nothing but your according to your standards and this is the version number okay so if you observe here from here are there any tags which are available in html there could be some tags but those are not from html guys these all belongs to xml so these all are user defined guys okay so i think this is sending a mail guys so this we are sending a mail to someone okay so this is an example of mail so initially you started with a note so initially you started a note or you opened a book assume like that so you are writing to the particular person so you can understand from the names itself to that particular person from jani so so to tov you are sending and from jani you got the heading is nothing but the reminder so you are reminding something for him so the body is don't forget me this weekend so i think they are going to plan somewhere they are going to go so that is the reason why he is giving the heading as a remi reminder and body inside body he wrote don't forget this weekend so the next line describes the root element of the document that is this is the document so here we are writing again note right so this is internal note okay so guys this example is a bit complex when compared to the rest one we'll be discussing the rest one also don't worry okay so net then you are having again a note so after that we are this is the first part of note so again this is the second part of note guys so here we are again having to to from jani that is nothing but reminder so i think the same example has been repeated so here you can just close it guys i think this thing is just repeated so don't follow that okay okay so let us take the book example i like this big book example because that's easy to understand okay so basically assume you are in a bookstore okay so that will be your root okay so inside bookstore we are having a module or we are having something called book 
okay so book didn't close right so assume that book store okay i'll be showing it book store closed where here so all the components inside that are in are the childs of this book guys sorry book store so after inside book in this book this book where did it end it ended here so all the properties which are inside that belongs to that book okay so we are having book so book belongs to some category that is nothing but cooking so you can say this is nothing but an attribute in HT in xml guys so same in html we will be calling these are attributes right whatever are within the tag so here also we are having attributes so these are called as xml attributes guys we will be discussing about the xml attributes also don't worry okay so here we are having the bookstore and inside bookstore we are having a book so inside book we are having title and we close the title so here it is title here we are having the author and here we are having the year okay similarly we are having the price also price so in this way we are having multiple books guys so that is what the example is all about price we again close with the book again we wrote the category here we gave the title with the language also language as harry potter the author we wrote year we wrote price we wrote similarly we wrote one more book so this is nothing but a simple xml program so if i give you this program and if i say what is this program stating you'll be just observing okay bookstore it is there book is there title is there so it is saying about some books simple right yes so that is the re sorry so that is the reason why xml is really popular and easy to understand guys so similarly this is also for mail so basically email to from heading body so again we wrote a to from heading body this is another mail okay so in that way we'll be working guys okay so i hope everyone got some idea about this xml right okay i'm expecting that everyone got a clear idea about the xml guys okay so now let us continue with some of the technologies which have emerged from xml guys i am also not having that much clarity on xml so i'll be just giving you the names so you can go through the description and you can search if you are really interested in them you can just search so from xml only we got xhtml xml doms okay and then we got these three that is nothing but xslt we got xsl we got xpath we got xquery we got dtd we got xsd we got xlink so we will be discussing about xsd in our future lectures we will be discussing about dtd in our future lectures and we will be discussing about xpath and i think so we will be discussing about xsl also so i'll be making sure that you'll be clear with these four topics guys which we will be discussing in our future lectures okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea that why we are going to xml so remember that xml is used to store the data and xml is used to transfer the data and in xml you can define your own tags so these are the three important points that you should remember guys okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on xml in this lecture so in the next lecture okay so there are even few more things we are having x pointer soap wsdl rdf we are having svg rss so in all this we will be discussing about pointer i think so x pointer okay so this is all about the xml guys i gave you a clear introduction so we will be again continuing the discussion with xml attributes in our next lecture guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching